Hello everyone and welcome. I recently saw a Jalopnik article about an auto car article from the 1970s that was talking about a Rolls Royce Wankel diesel engine and this was so fascinating that I thought I had to make a video about it. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. And basically uh, this engine, the goal of it was back in the 1970s, Rolls-Royce wanted to make this as a military engine for use in the military uh, and their goal was high power, high efficiency, in a very compact size. Wankel engines of course uh, have the benefit of being small and power dense. Diesel engines have the benefit of being efficient, so kind of combining all of that into this one amazing engine. Well, the challenge that they ran into is that Wankel engines are hard to design with a high compression ratio. And their solution, you could supercharge it, you could turbocharge it, they decided to add a whole nother Wankel engine uh, rotary in there, basically in order to use that as a supercharger or as a compressor. This is just a positive displacement compressor that forces more air into this uh, combustion chamber right here. So this one is just for transferring air, this one is actually where combustion is occurring. And so basically uh, how this works is the ratio of the displacement of this rotary right here versus this one right here it is going to give you your increase, a multiplier for your compression ratio. So this lower stage is 3,250 cc uh, cubic centimeters uh, versus this upper stage is 1,265 cc. You divide those two and that means your compression ratio is effectively being multiplied by 2.57. Now you may be thinking, wow, this is huge. Why would they use something so big to compress air uh, for that other stage? But actually they looked into just doing a single rotor with a high compression ratio simply by using uh, the geometry of how it's designed. And in order to do that, it requires a really large footprint. Uh, so a single rotor with a high compression ratio would be very similar in size to these two ro rotors uh, using this uh, to increase your effective compression ratio. So overall the size is actually pretty compact, even though it looks like it's basically enormous. Now another challenge they ran into is they decided to use direct injection, uh, but there wasn't too much research out there on using direct injection in diesel Wankel engines. So they ended up trying 30 different combinations for combustion chambers. They tried six different injector positions, uh, basically over a hundred different combinations that they tried out and settled on one that worked best. Uh, you know, much easier in a piston cylinder device to just have that uh, injector directly on top as that piston comes up right in the middle of that circle, perfectly distributes the fuel versus, you know, having that Wankel sweep by uh, is much more challenging uh, in order to have that perfect air fuel mixture and then have that ignite when you inject that fuel. So how does this thing work? Well, basically you have your air intake down here at the bottom. So this bottom rotor rotates about this blue eccentric shaft right here. As that rotates, it compresses that air into this stage right here. So then this rotor then rotates and compresses that air. Then you inject that fuel, you have combustion occur. The rotor continues to rotate about that separate eccentric shaft right there in blue. As it rotates, uh, the exhaust is then pushed out. You know, the, that's the power stroke right there is rotating that. Then the exhaust is then pushed out and it actually continues to do useful work rotating that second compressor with that exhaust and then finally dumped out this exhaust right here. Uh, so that cycle just basically continues and you know, both of these are rotating about and you're creating a good power within a pretty good footprint. So the Rolls engine is the 2-R6 engine and basically it was set up with two banks on two stages. Uh, so overall this was basically a four rotor engine. Uh, you know, sorry Rob Dom, they were doing this back in the 1970s. Producing 350 horsepower at 4,500 RPM and only weighing 939 pounds. Now 939 certainly sounds like a lot, but remember this is a diesel engine and this is back in the 70s. At the time it was way smaller and way lighter than similar uh, diesel V8s that had similar output. Uh, so the V8 you know, diesels were much bigger, uh, similar, much more weight, uh, similar output, uh, you know, but of course that drawback of their size and weight. So they did actually achieve their goal of having something that you, you know, was powerful, efficient, and in a much more compact size. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know, that ultimately uh, the research kind of died out. And so we don't have cool Wankel engines running around today. Uh, perhaps, you know, if more companies invested in it, we could have them, uh, but hopefully Mazda does come up with something uh, in the near future. Uh, so that would be cool to see you know this engine kind of live on but really neat concept you know it was, it was fascinating to hear about this using a separate basically rotary engine just as an air compressor uh, for the main rotor so very cool to see if you guys have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching should they keep watching more videos bucket
They should probably keep what oh god. Hey. That's alright. It's not okay, huh? Okay, I'll let you get back to your nap. <laughs>